Hello and welcome to another Live Code Hangout. Today, we're working on the Western Friend website. I've got a substantial pull request in progress. We are using PayPal for payments. This includes bookstore e-commerce. It includes donations and our subscriptions, which are basically recurring payments, but have to be handled uh, as subscriptions with PayPal. We are using ChatGPT to help us improve the test coverage. The pull request has a lot of failing tests currently because a lot of the code has been removed or moved around, changing behavior, obsoleting some tests. I will need to add some tests for potentially code that has been added. We've already added the test coverage for this PayPal module or app, which is new in the project. So pretty much all of the main components in this PayPal app have test coverage now. So what we'll do is just start with the failing tests, getting a list, a list of those. Now the code code says we have good coverage here, which is surprising me. It's only detecting that the orders model has changed, which is also weird. And this is an old, we've removed this line of code. So I think code cub is like kind of not up to date, even though it seems to be running because this pull request is affecting 82 files. So there should be some you know, a lot of removals, but not everything has been removed. All right, so I might not be able to rely on code coverage. Here we go, now we have our failures. Actually, this is interesting. We only have one failure, but seven errors. So here's an assertion that failed. Test process bookstore payments. So we'll just hop to this, whoops, this test here and I should look at the corresponding view test process bookstore order payment. We are in the payment tests. So let's try just running the payment tests right now. Keep the database so we don't have to rerun that every time. Now, conventionally, this sh should be plural. Now, I don't know if I'll rename that. Well, let me just focus in on the one we're working on here. So. All right, so that one passes. It's just been simplified, basically. So we can look now at the general payment tests. If I perhaps give the uh, contents, I just want to find a string of text in that template. Yeah, this is interesting. So, so let's see if I've got from order model. Okay, let's use the order factor here, and it can just Generate it. Let's double check. Mm, yes. So this is pretty sure these are all string. Now the thing is, MyPy still can't tell what's going on with these faker factories, so I'll have to say type ignore on all of them. But first, I'll well, I think just do that. Get rid of that blobby red text. This is something else. Nope. I don't like having to do this, ignoring all these type warnings. You know, because they're for safety. They they catch things. And when you have to just blanket put a typing order over everything, maybe I could have done that somewhere else at a parent scope. But uh, at least I've annotated these so that hopefully in calling uh, functions, we'll have the right information. And that's that. This is an integer. Decimal. So I'm inferring the types based on the uh, faker arguments and um, there may be like a type subs library, but I don't think that even the type subs, this faker is just a general thing. It can return all sorts of types. So like any type, I would have to have another 
method like an integer factory or something random int factory maybe exists then I think the annotations would work but yeah it doesn't seem like there's one of those so I don't know how I Okay, so that was just an aside. We have this factory that can be used in our test, so that I don't have to necessarily create an order. I'll just say this is an order because it's not necessarily clear to the type. In fact, it's confused because it believes this order is an order factory instance. But no, nonetheless, we want to use the order down here. Now here's a little bit of white text. What's going on there? I think any URL is fine. I just need a um, request. Um. This might not exist anymore. Let's see what happens here. Uh huh. That's why we're getting perhaps this color. A certain template you use. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Django. Now that should exist. Django is shadowing the, or so to speak, the test case. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I understand why. Enriching it with some Django specific things. All right, Django test client. Okay, okay. That's right. You are. So I might need to get the actual reverse. This is gonna make an actual call. All right, let's do this. Hey, we're not mocking that anymore. Whoops, wait a minute. Sorry, it's over here. A response, that'll be here. So first, let's see. Okay, so RL equals reverse payment process. Good guess, let's see. Let us see. The view, whoops, the URLs. Process books or order payment. That's very specific. Test. All right. So URL. So here's our URLs pi. Give the context that we've got this test suite and we're getting an error. No reverse match. It's probably something I could decipher, but let's see what. Uh, yes, that's okay. I get that. Yeah, and you just pass the URL. That makes sense. Very cool. Good. All right, that's you know, not getting too deep into the payment processing page. Kind of just ensuring that things are wired up correctly. That's using the expected template. Uh, that it is returning at least the order in the context. Now, I could check the uh, PayPal template variable. So. I need to move this to settings. It's going to be in an environment variable more than likely. I probably want to store it in the database. So the PayPal client ID, I can uh, I can assert this exists as well because the payment page won't work really without that. Now, how to determine the PayPal client ID? Let's take a quick look at the view. So the factory is good. The URLs are fine now. Uh, we get it out of the settings, PayPal client ID. It's already there. So we probably don't need it anywhere else just import this and that should still work yeah very cool so we're just going to commit these one at a time again don't need the request factory anymore we'll add this test which actually just resolved one of the broken ones and then this was basically add type annotations hence cool all right so now we'll go back to the, the payment app just run through these tests again. We have four tests. They're all passing now. That's a good start. I think we'll uh, either need to audit each of these apps that I'm changing to make sure I add the required tests as I go through and fix the tests or kind of go through and fix all the tests and go through and audit them. I don't know 
how to do these in what order would be good. Let's just see if this is here. So that's that, I suppose. Yeah, so just as long as I've uh, imported everything, I can see that it's not been used. So that's helpful. So let's, let's add a... That is curious. I don't remember how I did this. It may not even be used anywhere. Wait a minute. Oh, I see, I see. It's a helper function, not a. It's not a view itself, even though it would, you know, it behaves like a view. The reason for the redundancy is because this was previously shared in two different uh, code paths. So what I believe I should do is just remove it. And that should still behave the same. I don't believe it's needed any longer. And then uh, it was subtle, but the view name should have tipped me off a bit. So where's this error? Let's hop to that. Views by does not have an attribute render payment process page. Right, right, right. So just trying to mock it now. Ah, oh, darn it. Now it's. One more time. Okay, so. Basically, this is now that, and this is now redundant. I think so. Yeah. Then we're testing it by uh, the client, so we don't need it, all this stuff anymore. Cool. All right, take a quick break. Refresh my kombucha. Excellent, so our payment module tests are working. So let's just run the full test suite again. Now, there was only a few errors and one failure out of 207. So there's more errors, and it's like four errors so far. Huh, maybe the statistics were misleading, or maybe I was running a subset of the tests. We'll zero in on another app. Now these should all be relating to bookstore, payments, PayPal is already done. But I think there was also one about the user. Somehow I had broken <laughs> the user model. Okay, now we got six errors. Whiskey request has no attribute. User, user. Okay. Oh. 
the thing is, it's expected. Okay. I had to just be a little more careful there. But uh, yeah, this was the, uh, I wrote this code and it's unsafe. There might be a more succinct way of writing this. ChatGPT. But I don't think so. I don't think there is. Oh, no, no. Yes, if it's making the request to the Django client, that's true. But the problem was, the problem was in my test, we're just making a mock, we're making a mockery of the Django. So I would need either to fix the code, <laughs> like the model code to fit the test or fix the test to fit the actual code, either one. But yeah, it is not, a, in general, this is not safe to access a property of this without first checking it. That's not a safe assumption. So I think it's okay to have the double check. But yeah, I have to use the... All right, well, that's cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do both. It's interesting. A lot of these things I have no idea they actually exist. Django contra both models import anonymous user. Interesting. Top back down here, mock request. So let's just run the subscription tests. Ah, test. Indentation error, okay. So, so the, Oh, I see what I'm doing. Yeah. Copy and paste. Just not paying attention. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Six tests. Air fail. Ooh. Well, at least we have another one. But. essentially what it told me to do. So the problem is it's not redirecting it, hey? Yeah, so that's here. So I think I just used the template actually. Yeah, it's all done in the template. So I actually don't have a redirect. So. Hmm. Okay. I'll need to check in this pull request specifically how I've changed this get context method because this is very simple and I'm not including the form. In fact, I've deleted the form. So. I need to think for a moment how I would like this to flow in order to subscribe you have to make a payment and then the payment will be linked and the subscription id will be linked to a subscription instance that gets linked to a user account and we can't link it to an anonymous user so you have to sign in so that's the first step in order to proceed here you have to sign up now if you're not authenticated We 
we present you with login and register buttons. So essentially I need to revert some of the things I deleted here. So let's find this file, the subscription. A bit overzealous. So the subscription forms is no longer needed. The model, what did we do in the subscription model? Subscription models pi. Yeah, it was like, I was confused. I thought it was saying it was completely. Glitchy camera. All right. So here's the subscription model, subscription index page. Here we go. Okay. Uh -huh. We don't need this. So this is the part that is handling the redirect. Yeah. Okay. So that should be easy to restore. And when things reflow, it's just, where did it go? I don't think we allow get requests here, uh, post requests. I think this is only a get now. Is PayPal's doing everything. Uh, okay, right. Okay, I'm gonna serve. Okay, yes. I think this context variable is okay. So I don't really need any fancy checks for that. It's not a secret. Get context, I believe runs, there we go, serve. And yes, wow, is that? But again, is this safe? It should be, but feels unsafe, which is why I had this as attribute, right? Okay, bring that in. Where does that come from? Login, and then this. This is nicer. Yeah, hopefully I don't need that. It's just taking off the slash, I think. Trailing slash. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna make my test succeed. Let's see. It might still fail because of this unsafe property access. Whoops, let's give it a whirl, or at least the one test. Yeah, so that's the difference. It's the trailing slash. So, you know. Yeah. So I will go ahead and make the code uh, verbose, but. Or, but uh, okay. Or was that a different line? Okay. Now we're getting a redirect where we don't expect it. It's a little bit trickier, isn't it? Because I am checking the post here. 
So I need to figure out the um, the flow. And it starts at the template. Essentially, if they're not authenticated, they're going to see this login required. And perhaps for simplicity, let's just take a quick look. It's two buttons right now, a register and a login button. Already handled by our account system. So I, I don't think I need any other logic here. In other words, this is all they need to see. The login required links you to a login that will redirect you to the subscribe. Now, this is, I should have used the reverse URL here, but uh, so that's brittle. I might be able to get the reverse URL and the template. I'm not sure the syntax for that. Let's just add a note. I don't want to wrestle with that right away or GPT that and the view name subscription oh uh, yes yes that's the problem is because it's a wagtail page it's not like a a traditional django view that would be associated with a url so i can't really pull the reverse of that without passing it in so i'm rendering the subscription page subscribe page and then i render this template so there's Essentially, the URL here, if I can, is this valid? I don't think that's valid. Where, <laughs> that's the idea, but this is some other template syntax. Yeah, so pretty similar. I wonder what, where that comes from. Yeah, so this means that whatever we do, uh, whatever we name the subscribe page or whatever URL resides in on the site, it's not brittle anymore. I hard coded it previously. Uh, but this one, but this one. Well, this also, right? I'm going to leave those because that's actually coming from a module and the URLs for that won't be subject to change. It's brittle and I probably shouldn't do that. Let's see if there's a way. And then if I, I can just look up the view name, maybe I will. Yeah, the URL template syntax, just this stuff is not, you know, necessarily fresh in your mind all the time. So we do have this accounts. The problem is it's a like a module we're using. So the URLs aren't actually defined and we're kind of uh, combining a few or we have the Django core registration and login flow. And then we have another, I think package that defines it. I haven't worked with that in so long. It's just not fresh. So I'm going to have to do See if this even runs first. And visit the subscribe page. I'm logged out as a logged out person. Oh. You know, this is not so bad. And if we had like a register page, but I think what I did wrong, and I'll come back to this, is that we're not handling a post anymore. So I can't check for that. Let's do this one more time. I just all use the two buttons, the subscribe page. So now I was redirected there. So let's go again to subscribe. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That was a guess. So I can find the right. Ah, okay. 
And this, I think, is why I used the form last time. Ah, but I know a place I can look. In our navigation menu, we have buttons here. So templates, navigation, nav bar, log out, log in, Django registration, register, that's the thing. We're using Django registration um, package to make it a little easier to get this initial site launched and not have to write all the registration stuff. Let's try this now. So now we got two buttons, accounts login and register. Maybe, maybe this will work. That'd be the best because what happens is when you log in, we want you to come back to the subscribe page. Same thing when you register. Now we have a very simple registration flow right now, but let's try it again. So test user at email.com. Register. Now hopefully this will take me to the Nah. All right, it was too much, too good to be true. That would be something if we have a custom um, registration flow, I could handle the redirect in that case. So yeah, registration is going to leave people in the lurch just a little bit. Notice we're logged in already, so we can kind of head back over here to subscribe, and things should then work, which they aren't. So let's see here, what's going on? Function. Where's the yeah, key? I just want to hit 12. No, I should get a favor gone. It's just, <laughs> but uh, I think the problem here is the subscribe page is not configured. It's not necessarily a bug, but here we go. So now we're going to next subscribe. We do get redirected to the subscribe page. Now as I'm an admin, I can edit this page and just check. I think the uh, problem is, yeah, the subscription stuff is not um, configured. I'll do that in a moment. So let's continue now. So we don't need this redirect test anymore because that's just not how it works. In fact, we don't need the, I'll leave the little next thing in there is some kind of a future hint. <laughs> it was something I wanted to work. And I can maybe also add myself a note there to, if we do a custom implementation for the registration flow, support the next. But yeah, essentially we don't need to override serve. That means we don't need, this is all becoming more simplified. This is simpler now. I'll just make that note right now while it's fresh in my mind. Put it in there and a little note. Yeah, that I will not tackle here. Okay, this is looking good though. So if you're not an authenticated user, you'll see the login required. Otherwise, you'll start to see the, um, let's just indent this. Essentially the page body and the JavaScript, which had to be loaded before the page body uh, because the it's going to load in some PayPal buttons. It's a bit awkward here, but uh, this is actually no longer needed. I can clean that up. It was down there in the extra JS, which loads at the bottom of the page, but it wouldn't work because these page body, they have script elements in there. This is just an exception. Normally I would load, I would defer the scripts until every other element had loaded in. Uh, but in this case, there should, I think there should be some elements have loaded in before it gets to this part. So I think the user will even see some text. Of, I don't know exactly how the br browser defers, uh, how it, if it can register, render things lazily and then get to these other parts. All right, cool. But yeah, so it'll display the intro and then some buttons or some PayPal buttons. I like that. All right. So now we don't need to test for this uh, redirect anymore. It should always do that. And this test, this whole test in here is no longer relevant. We're not redirecting. Good. Less is more. All right, I'm just going to run them again. Five tests. Five succeeded. Oh, cool. Now these imports are no longer used. Let's clean those up. Because again, this is not secret. I don't, less is more. I don't have to think about why that's in there and scratch my head and potentially introduce, you know, unexpected behavior. Let's make sure I'm not gonna delete other things that are in use here. What did we do in this test? All right, so let's just uh, say simplify, clean up dynamic address. So we get the values from the context and reverse URLs correctly clean up. 
no longer need the 302 test. All right, we'll synchronize these changes. I'll run the full test suite, see what other apps are breaking, if possible. I'd like to, let's see, I'd like to merge this pull request this weekend. I'd like to merge uh, it tonight, if possible, and then come back to it again tomorrow afresh with any follow-up tasks like cleaning and fixing things, configuring them. So yeah, I mean, I don't have to get, I don't have to be hasty about merging it tonight. I don't know what the value would actually be aside from just not kind of feeling nervous about this behemoth, this behemoth pull request. Okay, not bad though. Four errors. And this is weird. <laughs> That's pretty unique. <laughs> What I think it is I need to, if I run these without the keep DB, I think my factory is creating that order. It's supposed to generate unique identifiers, but I might be sharing those across tests. I might be sharing the same instance. I'm not sure what's going on there. It was certainly a unique identifier. There was some randomness in that. Oh yeah, and I should have just isolated it to the subscription already exists. So yeah, see, this is unique. It's supposed to be unique. This is a prefix. And this is a unique suffix that I think is used uh, that Faker is creating. But for some reason, like inserting it, what are we doing? It does, I need this, this uh, uniqueness check on it. We can't have users sharing the PayPal ID. PayPal subscription ID at this point, there's no, re I mean, yeah, there's no reason for that. So the test and the setup is the, is where the unique thing is happening. All right, let's see. So what I'll do, subscription factory. Let me double check because This may also be out of uh, date. We don't have a sort of active and expired status. So I think this is where I'm gonna to have to focus more on the work test. All right, I'll just run there, but we'll read the code in the meantime. So the user model tests should only, there should only be one subscription associated with the user. So that's no longer. And if we look at the subscription model or the user model to reverse though, I need to get that from the subscription, I think. just to see if it's still plural. So subscription has a user and the related name is subscription because it's a one-to-one -one field now. This is a new constraint I've introduced here. So I don't know if you need all anymore. I'm not sure how that works, if it still uses the same query set. It's essentially a query set, I believe, of one, but there's some Django magic going on there. Ah, yeah, interesting. So it just goes straight to the subscription. Huh, very cool. Uh, all right, so user is subscriber now is a little bit different. Because it's not just if they're a subscriber, it's if the subscription is active. And that's a request we make to PayPal now. So this one we'll have to say, I'll get the exact keywords here from PayPal. But essentially every subscription, so the user model has this Boolean. I'm getting kind of tired. Let's see if it'll all automatically suggest how to mock this. It's a computed property though. I didn't mention that. Otherwise it's just gonna say to set the thing false. So I need to actually uh, mock the function call. Perhaps. That I didn't know about. Not sure if that's gonna work. I might have to mock it from the other perspective that it's in the, we're in the user. Let's see what happens. I might have given the right context. Wow. 
Okay, so it didn't really work. That should also be false. Oh, I'm running the wrong tests. Yeah, getting tired. Sorry. Interesting. Yeah. All right, true is not false. Alrighty then. So if I delete the subscription, user should not be a subscriber. That's strange. All right, self user subscription delete. Let me come back to this one. That's confusing though. <laughs> it seems like my function's not behaving how I expect it. So it's like a bug in the code. True is not false. There we go. All right, so did I not save it? Hello. I think what I can do, uh, model. I think it's something like this. This one needs more context. It's quite a, a tricky one. The problem arises because a unit test mock patch cannot directly mock the property of an attribute on an instance like user subscription is active. So this subscription is an instance related by a one to one field to the user. The subscription has a property. In your case, subscription is a related field for the user model and its is active property is what you're trying to mock. Instead of using patch on the mo model level, you can mock the is active property after you have a specific user instance and its associated subscription. Here's how you could write the tests. Setup, you create a user, set up, create the user, create a subscription for that user. Got it. Then we'll take these two tests. Here, Test is subscriber subscription. Test is subscriber subscription. Oh, active and expired, yeah. Yeah, let's try that. Delete. And now it's gonna patch that property mark. Okay, yeah, nice, nice. As, <laughs> maybe I could trailing comma those, print it, pretty print, 
format the document. Very cool. Now that works. Okay, so the other one is then, and this is about as much as I can do today. It's pretty good progress, you know? It feels like we're getting ahead. We're moving forward. We're getting ahead in the race. Everything works. Everything works there. Wow. All right. Run all the tests. I'll commit these. Fix. Yeah, and it looks like, you know, made good progress today. You know, I can't complain about that. So I'll come back to it fresh. Fresh tomorrow. It's 8 o'clock. It's a good, been a good night. <laughs> good day. I mean, the night is young. Just kind of want to get a, an idea of these tests. Still getting this paginator thing. I don't really know how to fix that. True is not false. User is subscriber. Hey. <laughs> I was just looking at that and maybe I ran this after. I don't know what happened. You know, I'm just gonna do the whole thing. It's, it's not very much of a trace back, you know? Might arise because you're deleting the subscription but still have self user object in memory, which could still have a reference to the now deleted subscription. Wow. That's nuts. Wow. That is master detail, master level detail. Huh. Just one error. I'll be right back. Maybe we can maybe we can pull through and get these done and then I will not merge tonight. I will not merge in a tired state. But it will be nice to have the tests. All right. Hey. It worked. The test passes. This is just an example though of how many nice things Django has built in. <laughs> Very subtle details that I would never have known I would needed if I would have just started out building project from scratch, sort of inventing my own idioms and everything else, you know, until you need it. Yeah, maybe it's only a couple lines of code to refresh something from database, perhaps, but uh, on all your models to, or to have to even think about that architecture of sharing this method when it's already part of the model and the many other <laughs> things that are already provided by the ORM and other aspects of Django, I don't know. It's just really nice to have these things. They're there when you need them and they're based on real lived experience from other developers. There are probably other frameworks like Django, such as Ruby on Rails, Laravel, things like that, that have these really nice, uh, it's inherent wisdom, I would say. It's kind of the wisdom of generations of appli applications, you know, in generation in an app life cycle is fairly short months maybe years a couple years uh you know it's not a human generation of, of course technology moves a lot faster it's a lot of inherent wisdom i think i just really appreciate working with and it can be then built into large language models that all that knowledge can be infused into this tool and if the knowledge is being thrown away constantly being wiped away good luck you know trying to get a useful answer on react 2018 code in 2023 for example i don't know yeah you just i couldn't imagine you have to have to prompt the gpt with the year the app was written and yeah i don't know maybe it would be able to help and well not try to harsh on javascript ecosystem too much but I think maturity makes a difference. Cool. So we'll synchronize these changes. Now we have one more. Cannot import name, magazine format choices. I think this is just an old thing I didn't clean up. So they're no longer relevant. So that was in the magazine. I didn't pay any attention to these tests, sort of as I was moving stuff around. I decided I would come to the tests when the code had stabilized a bit and uh, the dust had settled. All right. Yeah, and then now we just have you know some tests that are using it. So I just gotta. I think though, this is not gonna be 
this is where I'm going to hit some really complicated things because this is testing this subscription model in the context of the magazine, uh, reading the magazine. And uh, we have to use this subscriber. We can't use that as paid or active. And the date is not here either. So essentially, well, we'll see. Maybe I can get a little bit further down the road tonight. Now these, maybe that solved all of those. They were errors and not failures. Hmm. I'll have to look at this one with fresh eyes tomorrow. I want to make sure that our subscription model behaves correctly, and it should hinge on the the user is. Um, I suppose if we've mocked it and said the user is subscriber in the right places, then of course it would just behave correctly. But okay, fix magazine. And we'll run the full test suite again. I'd like to see it turn green. 235 tests. Okay, we don't have the errors yet. Errors and failures. We will have a deprecation notice or some weird uh, warning that I don't quite know how to resolve relating to our paginator. And uh, I've Got a generic paginator that we can, but for some reason it raises errors. 235 tests running. Here's this paginator error. It's at the query set, but it looks like everything was okay. A couple deprecation notices. Very good. We <laughs> refresh this long standing pull request. 1598 added, almost 4,000 removed. And let's take a moment and watch ci run takes a bit i'll fast forward the video uh, okay sonar i'll check this real quick <laughs> create paypal error or order and require authentication. Login required first and then require post. Yeah, because it's the body, JSON. Yeah, so that was a good one from Sonar Cube. And I'm thinking. Actually, we don't require login. Hmm, this is interesting. Because we're not necessarily associating an order with a user. We allow. We allow anonymous users to create orders. Yeah, so I believe this should be only a post. And I'll test this a bit more thoroughly tomorrow, but I'll go ahead and add that. I just, it's not fresh in my mind, the context, but since it has a request body, that's enough of a clue. So there's that. Uh, Sonar Cube had four of those, didn't it? All right, four security hotspots. So let's just see. Yeah, I reviewed this one. How do I get to the other ones? Sonar Cube, show me the way to review. CSR, okay, this is a good point. I should do a CSRF 
check here. That means I'll need to, <laughs> I'm using my little tabs are animated. <laughs> I'm getting tired. All right, I'll have to add CSRF to this. What I'll do is, uh, add the protection and then see if things break tomorrow. Well, I'll run my tests. Decoracos, like taco. No, not login, not post. Which comes first, CSRF or post? It's not login required though. Oh, I'm getting so tired. Ah, ah yeah, CSRF exempt, so it is by default safe. And I can use require post, so it's good. <laughs> it's already built in and we don't need to require it. Login, all right. Already remembered that anonymous people can shop in our bookstore. All right. So the both of those should be fixed by the most recent commit. Six broken test refresh. Require post. Oh, three security hotspots. Code scanning from Sonar Cloud. Said it was good though this time. Oh, the code analysis. I don't know the difference, but apparently this is the analysis. Capture PayPal work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have just looked a little bit further down the line. Require a post there. Yeah, I mean, that that's good. Good catch. So having these analysis tools, it's not just noise. Sometimes it feels like it. Sometimes I'll have to ignore some of the linty things. But yeah, this is good stuff, which handles CSR. Interestingly enough, again, because of the Django framework maturity, it, it kind of bundles those things together. If somebody's making a post request and you're requiring that, CSRF is already implicit in that. I don't have to re really think about that too much as a developer. I'm kind of protected by the framework. Interesting. One more time. Everything's running. There it is. All right, let's see. I have to jiggle the camera every once in a while. Freezes. Still waiting for CI. Two security hotspots. Oh, yeah. This is interesting. This came from um, PayPal. I copied the code i think they don't provide the reason i'm not supplying a version so you can't kind of have a checksum here or something payout checkout components i think are well i don't know maybe they are the the thing secure communication distributed da, 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 da. about the integrity 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 well I think I will have to just acknowledge these. Well, what would I say here? Honestly, I just, yeah, I searched. That is same here. I don't know that it's safe, but I need one of these and I haven't fixed it, so. That's that. Refresh it a little bit. So now this should no longer be blocked. We're a code climate good. Sonar cube says it's okay. We got some. Everything's blown up in the CI now. Maybe that's a good sign <laughs> that the code coverage is finally like, hey, maybe I can add a quick fix. I'm getting tired. done URI and this kind of comes from our server payment done URI but perhaps could be what is it? L it's an L yeah it's kind of passed in from our little from Django essentially but okay I can see that it could be risky and I'll manually test all this tomorrow code climate is rightfully and able to really parse this PR. That's what I'm worried about. It's giving me false confidence in the coverage at least. Oh, there we go, there we go. It just can't add inline comments. That's cool though. Now that the other CI jobs are going through, come on, Sonar Cube. What the heck? Ah. Yeah. 
it's supposed to ignore the uh, migrations. So those are going to be duplicate. How can I configure a sonar cube to ignore migrations? Sonar, sonar cube cloud. Sonar cube. Sonar cloud. I think I've added this file down here. No. Interesting. Code climate is using the sonar Python. I'm getting double analysis. Hmm. Perhaps that's just redundant. Yep. That is out of scope. All right. Waiting for CI. This is the double-edged sword. <laughs> you know, it's holding me up on lint in subscriptions. I'm trying to configure it correctly. Let me make sure I'm in the right. So this sonar project config is the right thing, but apparently it's not. Sonar project properties. Yeah. Mm, all right. Makes sense. How do I get the properties file? I'm going to just disable it. Project key is that. Hopefully this will work. I'll ignore the exclusions, All right? I can make it through CI with this pull request. Not tonight, at least. At least, hopefully, I'll get the sonar cube thing to pass. It'll ignore the migrations. Then maybe I'll get some useful information back from the coverage analysis, and then we can have a session tomorrow where we'll go through and make sure all the important stuff is covered. Taking the config. Mm. Essentially, everything is in migrations. I wonder if it's that I don't have the organization. What's going on? I mean, sooner if it's in our repository here. It would imply that I have organization access. I'm committing code to this repo. Just use the Use the config. All right, so we've got the main branch. It's good analysis, but this is the wrong file is going on right now. Information, organization key. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm missing. All right, all right. That should be correct. Let's double check. Yeah, all right. Add this on our organization.
So I'm not going to fight it too much more. Star Star Migrations. Configuration settings exclusions. Maybe this will work. A star star, I guess, is every directory or every file and directory. I don't know what that exactly means. What does star star mean? Files and directories under any directory name migrations at any level of nesting. <sighs> so project properties. You know, maybe I've got this dang thing spelled wrong. But I'm going to disable Sonar Cube if I cannot get it to run and, and ignore my migrations data. It's not as nice as it is, it's not worth it. Blocking my CI. Come back to that later. No, I'm disabling. That's it. I'm done. Yep, deleting it. It's cool, a project and really a lot of analysis it brings, but if it can't be configured, it's not worth it. the cost of a broken CI pipeline. I'm not gonna lint my migrations. It's just not gonna happen. Double check here. Code quality from Codacy. I've been trying to include these quality plugins to help me write better code. At least I want to get my coverage report back, which is happening there. And if I fail, I want a legitimate fail. I'm waiting for CI. I believe the tests will pass. The static code analysis should be decent if it ignores the things it's supposed to ignore. Coverage should be close, but I believe there will be some uncovered areas that I've added, perhaps, or changes I've made that have, and tests I've removed that have exposed some untested code. I'm not exactly sure, so that's why I'm using the tool. Let's take 
a bit. So this is a good payment, static. Forgot about that nuance of JavaScript, 69. Yeah, wait a minute, triple equals, oh. Yeah, 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 you have to deal with JavaScript. Triple equals, okay, okay. All right, PayPal admin.py, oh yeah. It is catching some lint for me. Register your things there. PayPal views.py. Created on line 107. True. And these are like uh, fix analysis issues. There's only a few of them. That's good. I don't mind doing this stuff. If the tool will help me by ignoring the parts that I'm not responsible for so somewhat I mean I do own the model migrations and sometimes you as a Django developer would need to manually write a migration so nonetheless the code style is not so important in that sense all right well this is getting but <laughs> I don't need these co comments over and over again I'll have to push less frequently but this one I'm trying to get through the CI and maybe I don't need the code climate comments, although yeah, they do help on smaller PRs. But generally I actually use the report, the first comment it makes right here, and I just, I keep referring back to that because it keeps it up to date. There we go, now we've got some coverage. So tomorrow, this is where we'll be working basically, improving the coverage here in the PayPal app. Mm, this dropped a bit, we might need to add something. Orders, views, will it drop big time? Some of these are pretty good though. Some of them don't really need anything, I guess. So yeah, a few more files to work with tomorrow, at least PayPal views, order views. This is still above 90. I'll see what the lines are, if they're you know, substantive or significant. It's actually redundant now. The subscription model no longer has. Ah, yeah, it's that. I added the expiration dates. Those are, yeah, I'll need to add those. Tests for that. That's good. So yeah, this is a really important tool. So anyway, I believe that the test coverage would be the remaining thing that is causing the CI to fail at this point. And we'll double check. I'll refresh it real quick. I fixed the code analysis tools, the static analysis, and yep, code cov. Okay, good. CI is failing, but that's good. It's a good failure because now I have clear signal from my code coverage where everything was getting polluted a bit earlier. So I had to kind of just clean up the CI pipeline a little bit and fix some of the issues of the other static analysis. I guess I don't need five or six static analysis plugins, although the sonar cube was nice. Just couldn't configure it. I had the, that issue on another, with another static analysis tool. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, sticking with CodeCope now and CodeAC. Okay, this has been another live code hangout. Kind of a long session, but we're getting pretty far along in this large effort to switch to PayPal for website payments. It includes our bookstore donations and recurring subscriptions, all of it. And one all or nothing pull request. I either do it or don't, but I can't kind of halfway switch over. Not with the, not with this project and being the sole developer and being so far down the road, at least.
stay tuned. Hopefully we'll get these uh, tests written, the test coverage uh, improved and merge this tomorrow, I'm hoping. Okay, hope you're doing well. Have a great day.